you're Lou City defender, you look up and there's seven players running at you instead of just the lone Kyle Murphy we saw at the beginning of last season. Tellefson, Jimenez for Ombi. Ombi, Tellefson, deflects, put in! to be the next man up and I told you watch this pairing as Tellefson puts it forward notice he sits right at the top of the box it holds Christian Sorto and the defender is late to step in as the strike comes off this is just really well read by Dylan Maris and in front of the estolpe it all end Miami seek an equalizer Elio Araguin with the whistle Never in doubt, off the post and in. That is a gorgeous penalty, unsavable. It's 1-1. And Kyle Murphy brought him in last season, coming off a 20-plus goal year. Couldn't really get him going. You would think none easier than this, but the chef's kiss off the inside of the post to get them back to even. Jimenez, 29 career assists in the championship. Puts that up for Gonzalez. Tellefson, Elijah Winder, cutback ball set back home. Oh, the box moving the other direction as Winder comes out there's that inversion once again by Brian Ombi it doesn't matter if that trailing run is Tellefson if it's Winder if McGuire's ready so is Tosh McGuire has saved four of 16 in his pro career Louisville's penalty taking talisman delivers sending McGuire the wrong way Two goals ahead. Opens up Segbers, goes route one, and he brings him down. Then it's just down to Sean Tosh and what you're capable of. Notice the hips. The last second, he closes this thing off. McGuire the entire time reads it open, reads the bottom corner. Everybody else did as well. Except Riverhounds would have the 4v2 advantage, so it definitely will work in their favor, but right now the Riverhounds are able to figure it out. There's Blackstock, right off the chest of Cronali. Griffin flips it forward again. Early ball across, Dequa! Flag stays down, Pittsburgh scores! The league leader, Albert Dequa, adds to his total. It's number eight on this season, and it's 1-0 Riverhounds. They're able to strike. You've got Blackstock off this left side with this ball in here. It gets deflected. Look at Griffin's vision, just finding them rotated forward. Dequa just getting in front. No one even close to Dequa on this. The one-time ball really catches the back line of the Legion off guard. You cannot leave him that wide open in the penalty area. This is Tyler Pasher as well. He scored a big goal in this stadium before, back in 2020 for Indy 11. Shot comes on and it's in! What a stunner there for Birmingham Legion! It indeed is the youngster, Matthew Corcoran! That is one to remember! His first goal, 1-1! Takes one step up, the second step hits that. Jabali Waite can do nothing. Pittsburgh perspective, they're not able to come away with a goal. Probably feel a bit hard done by it. Blackstock gets this into the middle, flicked along and in! There it is for the Riverhounds again! And who else but Albert Dequa, his league leading ninth, 2 1 Hounds! Right here, then pressing high, a bad clearance out. Blackstock does really well. Just look at this composure. Goes by the first bit of pressure, just puts it into an area that's dangerous. Dequa puts that on. Van Okel's got to be upset about that one. There wasn't a lot of power, but the technique to get it down, that is hard for a goalkeeper to get down that quickly. And he's got the moves to show as well. <laughs>
This ball punched right back in. And a good header initially won. It's still loose. A Adetaran puts it down. San Antonio has the opening goal. And it's Samuel Adetaran with his second in as many matches. The box, have a look at that ball. They all go and challenge for a keeper. Trey Muse comes out. Gets a bit blocked, but doesn't get to the ball. And from then, it's an absolute scramble. So at the end of the day, you've got to look at the goalkeeper and say, once you come, once this ball gets knocked up there and you come, you have got to get it. And he doesn't. And then his defense is scrambling and it didn't run well. We know. Azakar headed down and right off the line, but pounded home with his noggin. Fabian Garcia makes it 2-0. That's fantastic pressure once again from San Antonio. The ball coming in and deal with it. Have a look. Up he goes there. It's a good first header and a great follow up. Mitchell Tainter with the first one. Fabian Garcia follows up there, but not much they can do on the line with it. There's a looping ball in and it goes to the back of the net. San Antonio with a dream opening half. How about Tanny Alohe Shea putting in another goal, second in as many matches for him? Really brilliant, gets up here, heads it in under all sorts of pressure. There's arms all over him. But Alohe Shea! It is a fourth for San Antonio in the opening 32 minutes. And the 22-year-old has a magical start to his career in San Antonio. His third in two matches. I'm gonna go looking disconsolate, but just unable to catch him there. AJ Patterson, he's away, he's got pace. Has Oluwashai, but he's also got a fantastic finish. Gets away, thumps it, puts it past Trey Musa, maybe. Inside of the box, and the hat trick. The hits just keep on coming for Tani Olawashai. What an introduction the 22-year-old has made on the league. A hat trick for the young star. Lovely ball coming in here from out wide, played into his path. Great build up on the left-hand side, and he tucks it away superbly well. It's not an easy ball, it's bouncing up at him. But the service in is fantastic, and he's free again. The wouldn't want to be the defender or midfielder who messes up and gives the goal away, because I think Jordan Farr will have a few words to say. Here's Alawa Shai. He passes this time. A hat trick, and he adds an assist as Bailoni, an easy goal to make it 6-0 San Antonio. It's a beautiful ball played here by Pirano, and he's got his head up straight away. He's looking where Bailoni is, he's looking at his options. Should he shoot? No, he lays it absolutely perfectly. Again, my question is, you've got defenders, AJ Patterson. How do you let him run ahead of you, Bailoni? Should you stay? Here's a shot attempt. Muse had to come up with a strong save. Might not have been expecting it, but a highlight from the keeper. Now, a big issue. Bailoni bags the team's seventh. He's got a brace. San Antonio with a club record seven goals in an annihilation of Charleston. Seconds after Trey Muse has made an important save, Augie Williams loses the ball. There's a quick counter attack, and he's all on his own, Bailoni. But Trey Muse literally less than 30 seconds early. Be dangerous as they were two weeks ago. But Reese Williams, their right winger, suspended because of the red card last week. That one sent across. The Rowdies are lurking here. Spalding, again, headed on frame, and in. It's a replay of last week. J.J. Williams has his second in as many games. Rowdies in front, 1-0. It's like a ketchup bottle. You keep shaking it, you keep shaking it, and here comes the ketchup. Going everything right, and he's now getting rewarded. Beautiful ball in from Spalding and JJ Williams unmarked takes full advantage. Detroit still in the dressing room and.
Aaron Dian doing the hard work. And guess who they said again? JJ Williams again. Johnny on the spot. And with, like you said, Jeff, with Connor Sparrow, just a little bit dinged up. Right. Wow, Connor Rutz is wide open on the right hand side. Okay, here comes Jordan Doherty. Giap will let it fly and he will score a wonder goal. His second goal of the season, it cuts the lead in half 2 1. Perfect placement there for the man from Senegal. He comes home to the Sunshine State, and how about that, Jim? Couldn't hit it any cleaner than that. So I the confidence of Jop, and then the dinged-up Connor Sparrow. That comp Detroit City, 11th in the East coming in. Still haven't been a pushover. They've been a tough out for everybody they've played. How about that move? Set in, and it's a goal! Tampa Bay Rowdies! Charlie Dennis with the dink inside the box and puts it past Steinwasher. 3-1. Took his time, put the keeper on his butt, and then finished it last post. No problem. Using that size, using that skill. Nice did. Spalding cuts to his left. Got that first step. And it's another goal, 4-1, Rowdies. It is a hat-trick for J.J. Williams. The Ryan Spalding, J.J. Williams show continues. On your center box to stop the service. It has to stop right here. Spalding gets to the byline, the shimmy, and now it's too late. Defenders are now facing their own goal, and guess what? The man in form, the poacher of goals, off his hip. Local players in this Detroit setup for the last few years. Harris, getting in the attacking area, takes a deflection. He's got his first goal. Dayon Harris. It is 5-1 Rowdies. Look at him attack the space. That's his role as the outside player. Take your man on. And he does that. And look at the shot across the keeper. While Foster went down. Another collision in the middle of the park. Pickering in space. Knight to Pickering. Lays it back. Yes. It's a goal. Luis Fernando puts 901 FC on top. One goal to nil. Fantastic goal. And Pickering, who is normally... The one who finishes is the one who creates the play. And Fernando, his third goal of the season, a Chick-fil-A Mid-South goal, and the home club up in the ninth, ninth minute. We see it here again. Lovely pass. Pickering's away, in from a tight angle. We all thought he was probably going to shoot. Lovely little cross, and there's Fernando to ping it to the back of the net. Brilliant. Very clinical. And Fernando now... Involved in six goals over the last six matches. Yeah, he's been brilliant. Brilliant this season so far. And Pickering celebrating on the El Salvador national team. Into the center of the box. Vom Stieg with the header clears it, and then that's headed in. That's got to be offside. And a goal for Romario Williams. How is that not offside? And 901 FC is questioning mm. how that is not offside, and the flag remains down. And Romario Williams has leveled matters with his fourth goal of the season. Mm, and that angle, hard to oh. tell, but he's appears to be clearly offside, although that's not the best best view of it. Bruno Lapa might be keeping him on. Mm. There, we might see it better. There's the header. It's Bruno Lapa keeping him onside. Yeah. So he is onside. Yeah, Bruno Lapa slow to get out. Graham Smith. Long ball. Oh. Fernando chips. It's in. It's, it's in. in. What a goal. Luis what a Fernando goal. from distance goal. has given the home side a two goal to one lead. A brace for Fernando.
Unbelievable finish. Nando, the brace. That's a difficult finish. His third finish. and fourth. That is a difficult finish, I'll tell you what. The Brazilian, I mean, that is just, that's class. Absolutely class. Of all the opportunities 901 FC has had tonight, that might have been the toughest. That's the toughest. And it's the one that goes to the back yeah, of the net. Absolutely brilliant. Everyone was just holding their breath until the ball came down because now we have to see see this out. See what stoppage time is going to come as well. Greg Hurst sinking back to get more involved with the play here. As this flag stays down for Suggs. He's got options in the box. Lofts this one up. He's going to find Moreno. How's your touch? Amando Moreno off the rebound and it's tapped home. First professional goal for Alex Wagner. And it comes in the 22nd minute. New Mexico take the lead over Monterey Bay. It really deep cross from Suggs. Great strike, too hot to handle. Wagner the first to react, just like the, the fox in the box. Just always sniffing around saying, where's the ball gonna pop out? And, won't be the prettiest goal he ever scores, but he will not care one little bit. Replays tonight brought to you by TLC and Alex Wagner, the 18-year-old. Yeah, it looked like it was clicking, but then you know, RGV just didn't quite work out. So back to the drawing board for, for the coaching staff. Moreno plays it back, looking for Rivas, and Rivas has scored in his third consecutive USL Championship match. And New Mexico go up 2-0 on Monterey Bay. One man down, no problem. The insurance goal for the black and yellow in the 60th minute. Trailing his run. And there was Sergio Rivas, who was just first to react to that ball. <laughs> what a composed finish. Most people would slash at that with their left foot. He just opens his hips up and passes it into the far right corner. Keeper has absolutely no chance. And what a run of form here for the hometown kid, Sergio Rivas. Three consecutive league games with the goal. Ball poked away by Ryden. Dawkins gets the deflection. Here's Akoli now. Akoli tries to play the cross in. And eventually, Monterey Bay able to pull one back. It was Rebelar scoring here in the 80th minute. And the Union have pulled one back here late, Chris. Hill time back, as you can see, the, the, I think they just came off. Is it Seymour? I think maybe just a little deflection of Seymour on its way through. Yeah, that just took it away from time back. So it looked like you might. Play, play, play. Play, play, play. Aron Gomez trying to make work on Chica does well. Aron Gomez, the cross in, it's a goal! Chris Garcia with his first ever for Locomotive FC. All made possible by the box-to-box -box forward. Garcia, basically off his chest, but as a wise man once said, they don't ask how, they ask how many. And the answer is one for Locomotive FC. Duke. They are setting up in that 4-4-2. Uh, mostly we'll see them 4-3-3, and I think just coming on the road here, just knowing how many goals Sacramento has been able to put in at home. Uh, dangerous looking ball right there. Almost turned over Herrera. Here's Cicerone! Yes! Russell Cicerone pouncing on a mistake in the third minute. It all started with Herrera getting in the mix. And it's number five for Russell Cicerone. And Russell Cicerone once again, right place, right time. And it was a beautiful finish. And Ole just undecided whether he could pick it up or not. And what a finish, Cicerone. You talk about time and again where guys just make runs, good things happen. It wasn't going to be Herrera on the end of that one, but it was the second guy making a run and it paid. Follow the game, but when, when it's a deliberate foul and you're slowing down the, the counterattack, you, you, you typically get the yellow.
So it's still Silva handing out the first yellow. Here's Gurr going to rip this ball in, looking for Cicerone. Maybe Herrera with an opportunity. Coming together with, oh, here's Cicerone. Denied the point attack. Cicerone puts back the other one. Russell Cicerone with an early brace. And Sacramento has him cooking in the capital city. And it falls to Cicerone, and you think the opportunity is gone, and he gets it back and slots it right in the corner. Two goals for him. What a start here. In less than 10 minutes in California's capital. And it looks like Meshach Jerome with a first Jerome with a first block right at the line there to get that save, but unfortunately couldn't get the second one there. And Odell taking a gamble, and sometimes a goalkeeper. And if Indy 11 can get one here, looking like they were destined to be going down 3 0 in the last few minutes. And swinging ball on a set piece, and it's through. Another set piece goal for an opponent, and it's 2 to 1. Indy 11 has got one back, and it looks like Budati on the end of it. First shot on goal for Indy 11. That's been seven for Sacramento Republic, and it's 2-1, the game on. In between two players, Jared Timmer, Luis Philippe. No foul call there, Archimed, and the ball falls to Indy 11. Matt Lagrasse is just gonna take this one away, gets it right back to Archimed. What a cheeky move to Zico Lewis. Lewis cutting back in. Oh, Archimed spinning around, it's Cicerone. Cicerone putting the game away! Add that to the list of uh, incredible team goals that they've scored so far in this early on in this USL championship. And Archimed doing a great job of leaving it be in Cicerone. Hammers it home for the hat trick. A great play by the two substitutes. Zico Lewis, Luther Archimed, Cicerone. Really well done by Lewis. You take a look at that replay there. Staying on his feet. Robledo is right on his hip. Cabrera. Right ahead, Raleigh will go back to Coque Vegas. To have an outlet like that, you're so confident in. He'll play back, now Cabrera again. This time on the attack. And Corona plays it back. Go long range here and in. First of the night, Robert Coronado from outside the box. And this comes off of Cabezas winning a big header off the Coque Vegas clear. And he finds Cabrera in the box who cuts it back. A little deflection and first time near post. Coronado absolutely buries that. Puts a little bit of a bend on the ball so it's out well beyond the out route. The 2023 Charlie Football Home Away and Goalkeeper Kits are all on sale now. Visit the shop.sdloyal.com. Get yours today. The ricochet, it's going to be a second one in. It's Francois with his second of the year. Two goals in four minutes for the Toros. You see there, Guido double teamed. That's the dueling presence, and then this ball's whipped in, and it's again a little misclear deflection, and Francois is right there. Unfortunate, you've got, you're loyal. You've got to get a body on that player. Coco maybe come to it. But you, you feel the crowd now. They're responding. They're sending some extra energy out there. Vegas plays it out for Riley. And ahead, Damos. Stays with it. Ronaldo. Perez looking hard. Adrian Perez. Is it a shot? Is it a cross? It doesn't matter. Comes here, Ronaldo, some individual brilliance, finds Perez in the space, takes on 1v1 and just whips this across. Absolutely nothing Derek can do there because it's bending over his head. 
lovely little first time ball from Elijah Martin to Mosho Bond, but Benitez is well recovering defensively to snuff that out. Mosho Bond is down behind the play. Here's Francois on the other side. Cabrera plays it out. Ruiz goes in. Another first half strike, three for the Toros. And Ricky Ruiz has his second of the season. Those are the main of the goalkeeper's existence. You've got to at least force them back post, but Francois does well here. 1v1 versus Stoneman, plays it across. Left foot by Ruiz, near post. That cannot sneak into your near post like that. He didn't even hit. That was a make low left. He made upper left against Orange County last week. Corona fires away, it's in. Stoppage time, it's 3-2. And San Diego, a little bit of life. Calm, cool, collected. Derek dives the opposite way. Probably have done his homework. Corona buries it, leaves zero question. That's what the, the responsibility of the defensive mid, isn't it? You have to pull into the areas where the, the fullbacks vacate. Epps alone at the top of the box. It's left, and there's an opening goal from Bird. Unselfish play. He left it beautifully on the edge of the area, and Eric Bird has his first of the season. Ah, it's the game. Epps into him. That little fake shot there, brilliant. Brought out wide, and a strike and a half from Bird into the back of the net. Immediate contributions from Milo Yosef. He dummied it there, and he kept Marcelo Lage. Pato Faz for Las Vegas Lights against Michael Nelson. And he smashes it past him. Las Vegas are level. Faz has his second of the season. The goalkeeper saved it, but very confident penalty from Faz right down the middle. Well, not down the middle. In. They gave it away at the end to lose by three goals to two. So that's the way it's been. It's been really tough. And there he is. They lost 2-1 against New England Rebs. Got themselves back to 1-1 in the Open Cup. Now all of a sudden it's Danny Trejo. Trejo scores! Was that over the line? It was! In the opening five minutes, Phoenix rising on the board. Trejo, 1-0! Knew he could do damage. Look at this, he's got but the pace to leave, not one, but two defenders behind and balance it and get it past Richard Sanchez. And it just crosses the line. I don't think there's any doubts about that. You'll see it here as it goes fully over the line. Trying to give the advantage to Hartford Athletic here. Trying to get this back on level terms. Edward scores. Slots it right into the corner, silences the crowd here in Phoenix, and just like that, it's 1 1. That's clever play by Openo, and Edwards here sends the keeper the wrong way, tucks it back of the net, and as we suggested, it just takes one moment. They haven't offered much since the fifth minute or so, first couple of minutes, they look sharp. Since then, Hartford have offered nothing, but. It'll be an in swinger, Barrera, headed away. Oh, what a slip, and all of a sudden, Phoenix could be in. Carlos Harvey, one-on-one. -on -one. Harvey scores! Just like that, Phoenix regained the lead. 2-1. But such an error there on that ball, and it's Matt Sheldon who has his pocket picked. And there's no way they can get back. You can see them trying to get back. One Torres has made the run. That's through the goalkeeper's legs, which is Sanchez. But he's got so much time, Carlos Harvey, to wait for the goalkeeper to stretch his legs apart and bury that ball. These are the question marks that I, I, I'm assuming Juan Guerra will be battling with after this match is finished. And Joma. Now the cross comes in. King in there to attack it right in front. It's bubbled over the line. And has given Phoenix Rising a 3-1 lead. Some insurance laid on. It's been frustrating for him. This was a foul there, but the referee 
plays on quite rightly and it's a good decision i think it comes off trejo's shoulder almost he turns his back to it it, it hits him there bounces back <laughs> and Artiago gives a little bit of a back heel of some sort just there well, not a back heel the side of the left foot just enough to get it over the line and get his name on the score sheet Ramella. Mfeka, now the takeaway, Mfeka rolls wide, central feed comes to Vermella! Fourth of the season for Derek Vermella. And actually comes deep to make this entire play happen and then gets on the end of it right here with the deflection. Unlucky for Orange County. But who better to pick up the scraps and absolutely not miss an opportunity but the goal scorer himself, Derek Formella, leads the team now with... That got with Memo Diaz next to him. And it's Diaz. Back to Mfeka, Mfeka's cross to an unmarked man, it's 2-0. First goal of the season. Getting it done for the boys in the back. I love the decision from Mfeka to not take a touch across his body, opens his hips, left-footed service into an unmarked rod, and man, look at the joy, the elation. Strong challenge. They play on. Here is Rodriguez. Rodriguez dragged from behind. They play the advantage. Two on two, Rodriguez slips it through. It's Reno looking for the third, and he has it. So, because he sees Eduardo Rodriguez streaking down that right side.